Today's lesson objective is 4.2G, relate decimals to fractions that name tenths and hundredths. Number lines representing values of less than one can easily be broken into tenths or hundredths. To break it into tenths, you would need to divide the number line from zero to one into ten equal sized spaces. So you can see, as I label here, we have one space, two space, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So these are ten equal size spaces. So what gets a little confusing is we think that we need ten marks. And we do use ten marks, not counting zero, this being the first mark, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten represents our whole. This would be ten t tenths. So one whole is equal to ten tenths. Okay? And so this number line could be labeled, each marking could be labeled using decimals or using fractions. We know that the first place value behind the decimal is referred to as tenths. So we could label each marking as one-tenth, two-tenths, three-tenths, so on, using our decimals, just like you see here at the top. Or we could use the fraction, right? The fraction one-tenth, two-tenth, three-tenth, and so on. Okay? So this is showing us that these have the same value as each other. The decimal point 0 0.1 is the same as the fraction one-tenth. Okay, they're even pronounced the same when you read them out loud. So here we have the decimal two-tenths makes the fraction two-tenths. Okay? Now, you can actually do the same thing with hundreds. Now, you would need to break your number line from zero to one into a hundred equal size spacings. Okay? Now, here they've kind of helped you visually. They made longer lines in between. These longest lines are representing those tenths like we looked at earlier. Okay, so you can see that right here. Halfway in between each of those longer lines, there's another somewhat longer line. It's a little bit longer than the smallest ones. These are halfway in between the tenths. So as you would expect, if this is 10 and 20, halfway would be 15. So these are counting by point zero fives if you go by the somewhat smaller markings. Okay? The tiniest markings, those each represent a hundredth. So here we'd have one hundredth, two hundredth, three hundredth, four hundredth, and then when you get here, you get to five hundredth. Okay, so each marking is a hundredth. Now, just like before, these values could be replaced with fractions. This point ten could be written as ten hundredths, because that's how you pronounce that decimal, right? So that would be ten hundredths. So that would make this one twenty hundredths. Okay? You could even do the same thing with the ones you see up above, where they're going by every five hundredths. So this would be five hundredths. And this one would be fifteen hundredths. so on and so on. So you have 25 hundredths, 30 hundredths, and you can even do that with the individual markings in between. If I go to the first tiny marking after 45 hundredths, that would be 46 hundredths. So you could either label that as 0 0.46 or as 46 over 100. Okay? So number lines can be used to represent decimals or fractions. Now, sometimes we have to have number lines that go beyond 0 to 1. Alright, we looked at how to do it with 0 to 1, but the process is still the same even if we start at a different value other than zero. So in this example of this number line, we're starting at 1.6 and we're going to go to 2.6. Okay? So again, looking at the number of markings in between would tell us what we need to count by. So there's 10 markings in between, meaning that each marking from here to here would be worth a tenth. So if I'm already at 1.6, so that's 1 and 6 tenths, then this first long mark would be 1 and 7 tenths. And then the next one, 1 and 8 tenths, 1 and 9 tenths, so on and so on. 
So then that would tell me that halfway in between, well, 1 in 6 tenths can be read as 1 in 60 hundredths. And that doesn't change the value. That has the same value. 1 in 6 tenths is 1 in 60 hundredths. This one can be thought of as 1 in 70 hundredths. Again, not changing the value of anything. But it helps me understand that this mark that's halfway in between would be halfway between 60 and 70. So that's where the 65 comes from. So that's 1 in 65 hundredths. Okay? And then that makes each of the tiny little markings a hundredth each. So, for example, the first little tiny marking after 1.6 would be 1.61, and then 1.62, 1.63, and so on and so on. Okay? So number lines sometimes start at zero, like in the first example, but other times they could start at a different number. But you can still figure out the values of the markings by looking at the number of spaces. Um, this is a good example of what we were just talking about, how this top number line is from 0 to 1, just like what we saw before. But if I just focus on this space right here, the distance from 0.3 to 0.4, that could be made into its own number line, going from 0.3 to 0.4. And then the markings in between, if I have 10 equal spaces, would each represent 10 hundredths. Or 1 hundredth, I'm sorry. Each represent 1 hundredth. So this went from being a measurement of tenths here on this number line to when I zoomed in tighter it became hundredths so 0.3 became 0.30 which represent 30 hundredths and then each one's worth one hundredth okay and so you could even break it down further we're not going to but you could even zoom in between 0 0.30 and 0 0.31 break it into 10 equal spaces and that would make another place value okay Now, we can also model fractions and decimals using our base 10 blocks. And if you don't have base 10 blocks, we can draw a pictorial representation to help us understand it. Okay? So if I use a flat, remember flat's the flat squares, and I say that that represents my whole, so one flat is one whole, then if I break my flat into 10 longs, then if I divide one whole by 10, that makes each long worth a tenth. So if I shade in one, that's one-tenth. If I shade in three of them, that would be three-tenths. If I break my hole even further down into hundredths, so these little unit squares, okay, then each square is worth one-hundredth. So if I shade in 30 of those, that would be 30 hundredths. Okay, so that's using a base 10 representation to model a decimal or a fraction. Okay. So here we've got, we want to model the decimal 0.7, or the fraction 7 tenths, using our base 10 blocks. So to make that fraction, again, we would want to break it into 10 longs, each one being worth 1 tenth. And to show 7 tenths, I would shade in 7 of those. Here I'm trying to model the fraction, or decimal, 70 hundredths. Now I know you're looking at that saying, well, that's not 70 hundredths, that's 7 tenths. You're right, but again, we can write a zero on here, and it doesn't change its value. So that can be pronounced 70 hundredths. And so I would break my flat into hundredths, in other words, the tiny little unit pieces, and I would shade in 70 of them to show me 70 hundredths. Okay, because it's 70 out of the whole. Now, sometimes you'll have to model fractions or decimals that are greater than the whole. Because remember, we established that the whole is one single flat. So if I'm trying to model 1 and 7 tenths, or 17 tenths as an improper fraction, um, then I need to use a whole to represent the 1, and then I need to model 7 tenths for the 0.7, or 7 tenths part. And so that's this first flat is the whole. So this is just 1. And then you notice there's 7 shaded out of the 10 here, so this is 7 tenths. Okay, you can do the same thing with hundredths. If I have 70 hundredths, 1 in 70 hundredths, here's the 1, here's 70 out of 100 for the fraction. So whatever you establish to be your whole, if you have a whole number, you need to have that many holes before you model the decimal or the fraction. Now, you can determine whatever you want to be your whole. 
I was using flats to represent my holes earlier. If we wanted to represent let a long, one of our longs represent a hole from our base 10 blocks, then we can do that. But this time, if I want to model 1 and 7 tenths, or 17 tenths as an improper fraction, then the long needs to be shaded to represent my hole, and then I need to break that long into 10 equal size pieces, which are my unit pieces, and I would shade 7 of those to show 7 tenths. So this is 1 and 7 tenths. Okay, just like before, this was 1 and 7 tenths as well, but this was using this as my hole. This is 1 and 7 tenths when I use this as my hole. So you have to determine what your hole is going to be. Here it is looking at um, the circles. We've got um, letting a complete circle represent our hole. So if I want to show a tenth, I break my circle into tenths and shade one of them. If I want to show a hundredth, I break my circle into a hundred equal size pie pieces. All right, and I just shade one of those. Okay, so that'd be a hundred. So if I'm modeling 0.2 or 2 tenths, I would shade two out of the 10 triangles. If I want to do 70 hundredths, each one of these sections is worth 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? Because those were tenths. And so each of the little markings is a hundredth. So this would be 70 out of 100, so 70 hundredths. Just like before, you can use these to model values that are greater than one whole. So here we got one and two tenths. So I need one whole circle to represent the whole, and then two tenths of the next circle to represent the two tenths. Or for one and thirty-five hundredths, I would use one whole circle to represent the whole, and then I'd shade in thirty-five of these little markings to represent the thirty-five hundredths. So here's ten, twenty, thirty, and then five more makes thirty-five. All right, and this last one is using money to help us represent decimals or fractions. Um, think about the value of each of the increments of money. So you have a dollar is worth 100 pennies. So our dollar could act as our whole. All right, it would be our whole, it would be our one. So any of our coins would represent a fraction or a decimal out of the whole. So dimes, it takes 10 dimes to make a dollar, right? So each of those is worth a tenth. Pennies, it takes a hundred of those to make a dollar, so each one of those is worth a hundredth. For nickels, it takes 20 nickels to make a dollar. So one divided by 20 is 0 .05. So each nickel is worth five hundredths. And then for quarters, it takes four to make a dollar. So one divided by four is 0 .25. So each quarter is worth 25 hundredths. So we can use any combinations of dollars and coins to represent any numerical value that we want. If we want to represent 1.67, I would need a dollar. Okay, I would need I could do it a couple different ways, but we can do two quarters. Each of those is worth 25 hundredths, so together that's 50 hundredths. I need 67 hundredths. Those are cues. That's hard to read. So two quarters is 50 hundredths, right? So I still got 17 hundredths to go. So I'm going to use a dime. That's 10 more of my hundredths. Up to 60 hundredths. Then I'm using a nickel. So that's worth five more hundredths. It's now up to 65. And I'm going to use two pennies. So P's for pennies. So that's going to be worth two more hundredths. So if I add all that together, dollar, of course, is worth the whole. So if I add all that together, I get $1.67, or 1 in 67 hundredths. Okay, so that's using money to model decimals and fractions. That concludes our lesson. Thank you.